Here's your host, Alex Garrett. All right, well, here on Alex Garrett Podcasting, I'm continuing to read the story of Rudy Rudiger. Remember him? Rudy, Rudy from Notre Dame, number 45. Well, my next guest definitely knows of Rudy. I'm sure he loved the movie, Doug Hart. But Doug, I don't know if you knew this before I mention it. You and Rudy have something in common. You both uh, run or ran a uh, cleaning company. Yes, Rudy, after his days at Notre Dame, ran a cleaning company. And I'm like, okay, well, I got to get on a guy that's running a cleaning company now because Doug, as you may know, as we're getting this pandemic, Doug Hart, how big and how vital is the cleaning process now that we're leaving this pandemic? And you're with Citrus Appeal, so welcome aboard. Yeah, thanks very much, Alex. Uh, it's always great to talk to you. Now, did um, you know before I mentioned that no. you and Rudy had that in common? Uh, did I know that? No, I did not. But I love Rudy, and I, I'm judging by his character and, and all the work he was willing to do to get on the team. It seems like it's a perfect fit in terms of the industry he chose because uh, – it's detail oriented. It's not easy to keep your customers happy, and he seems like he'd be good at that. Well, he ran it for a few years, and I know you're in the midst of running Citrus Appeal, and um, I see you guys on Instagram all the time, and you guys are busy. But yeah, coming out of this pandemic, I feel like it ties perfectly into the industry because how important is having your place cleaned up going to be as we're leaving the pandemic? Yeah, it's always uh, it's always important to have a clean uh, a clean place. We we focus much like Stanley Steamer on carpets, upholstery, tile, mattresses, uh, that kind of thing. So it's mostly residential, but we do have a big commercial presence. Um, and you know, we say carpets are the second biggest filter in your home, so it's it's important to keep your you know carpets and upholstery clean. Um, and I know you know, especially when you have young ki- young kids or or pets, um, it gets downright disgusting if you don't clean them. And I know Citrus has been working through the pandemic, so maybe those who are in the cleaning industry or, or on the outside looking in, tell us a little bit about what you guys have been doing. Oh, yeah. Um, well, basically, um, it kind of mushroomed out to be something much bigger than I ever thought it would be. I, I have a painting contracting company, and uh, this kind of grew uh, out of that, and uh, we, I decided to put a little twist on it, a uh, branding twist which was uh, we, we apply a natural citrus pre-spray to everything instead of, you know, the usual Stanley Steamer stuff, which kind of smells like Febreze. It's a, a real toxic type of smell as far as I was concerned as a customer. But, um, you know, the, the, the mothers with uh, young children and pets, they all love our natural solutions. Um, makes your whole house smell like an orange peel. It's fantastic. And, um, you know, we, we really don't even need to do much advertising, although we always do try to, you know, grow the company. But we have uh, nothing but repeat, you know, customer list. And every, you know, day of, of the year is pretty much spoken for with existing customers. So it's great. Well, I've never asked you this. And we're, we've been friends for now five, six years. Uh, I've never asked you this, though. You adapted from radio to cleaning. What was this transition like? Why did you make the switch? Oh, yeah. Um, Why did you get really... into Talk to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The radio thing was. Uh, beginning to to sour on me because I had a young baby at the time and I would wake up, take the sea streak at like five thirty six 6 a.m. before my son was, uh, uh, was uh, awake and then come back after he had uh, fall, uh, gone, been put to bed. So it didn't work for me. I, I said to myself, this is not going to work. And, uh, the first thing I did was start a painting contracting company. I kind of, uh, I had, a, had a, I have a friend who, um, is an estate manager. He manages some of the nicer, you know, estates in the Rumson area. And um, we started that together. It did pretty well. And then I started the Citrus Appeal uh, as, an, as a sort of complement to that business. And it really took over as uh, my, main, my main business. And right now, it is my main business. And the painting contracting is, um, you know, I only take a job if I really want it and really like the customer. <laughs> so, um, but that's the reason why I did it. I now, I now, basically see my, my son more than uh, more than his mom does. I'm there to pick him up from, you know, his preschool. I'm there to drop him off to preschool. Um, you know, I'm pretty much his uh, primary parent, and I love it that way. It's fantastic. Well, I know that you and him are very close, so uh, does he ever want to help you on the job? I know kids love to clean up things when they're very young, so is he ever on the job sites with you? Yeah, not, not yet. In fact, he's the opposite uh, as we speak. He's... Um, using permanent Sharpies to draw happy faces on my couches. 
So um, luckily, his dad is a owns a carpet cleaning, steam cleaning company, and I can get him off or have my employee get him off. <laughs> so I hope one day he gets out of that phase and then helps me uh, to work. But absolutely, you know, um, he will be expected to work in the summertime for me because I'll pay him well and uh, and give him a good work ethic. But it's um, it's definitely something I hope that uh, that he wants to help me with, not necessarily do when he's older. He can do whatever he likes. Doug, I've got to ask you this. I mean, you're a business owner, so in this pandemic, how has that been from that side of things? And and has oh things, yeah, sorry, I didn't have things gotten better for you as an entrepreneur as well during this time? Yeah, I, I would say um, they did during the pandemic um, in terms of um, disinfection spray mist services that we that we have. Uh, we've always had those services way before the pandemic. And uh, it just became huge during um, the, you know, during the early part of the pandemic when people were really scared of the virus being airborne. Um, we did a lot of um, spray disinfection of one daycare chain in particular. It's a national chain, and we were spraying their 10,000 square foot uh, daycare centers and uh, doing well with that uh, while they needed us to do it. I think, you know, as uh, time goes by businesses in order to remain solvent realize that they have to take care of certain things themselves. And, uh, you know, they've kind of enlisted the help of their staff to spray disinfection, you know, uh, products after the kids come in from playing outside or you name it. So we knew that would, be, that would happen eventually. Uh, we still clean their carpets and we're happy doing that. But, um, you know, it was a good way to get through the pandemic. If there, if there ever was a good way, to do that, but uh, don't do much of that spray disinfection anymore. Um, it, it was it was a good replacement for carpet cleaning and upholstery cleaning and tile cleaning while we were basically out of business. And though, and I well, Doug, I was going to say that you know a lot of emphasis was on the sanitation and the and the and the sanitizing, but the reality is uh, maybe people focus more on that than making sure their carpets were clean. Did you ever notice that? Sorry, uh, your your question didn't come through uh, on my line. Do you want to repeat the question? Sure. Sorry about that, Doug. No, I was just going to say that you know a lot of things went into the sanitization, not so much the cleaning. So, do you wish there was an effort to make sure people knew that it wasn't just sanitation that their carpets still need to be clean, or or were people balancing it out pretty well? Yeah, um, I, I think um, when we when we when we use hot water extraction. Uh, and our citrus cleaning agents, we are sanitizing, actually. There's many ways to you know, skin a cat. Um, just because we're not spraying disinfection, uh, thyme oil disinfectant um, you know, doesn't mean that the items we're cleaning aren't getting sanitized. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really important to, um, to, to clean and sanitize your, your, uh, you know, your furniture and your carpets. Um, and I, I don't think that the spray disinfection service is really something that's needed um you know if i'm being completely honest because i think that uh, uh i think that we were through the worst of the pandemic and and uh, as long as you keep a neat place it's uh you should be in pretty good shape doug well doug i, I want to ask you this because a lot of debate was whether indoor dining should keep going should be discontinued i mean you saw it from not only uh, a business owner's point of view, from from a regular person's point of view, and if they just cleaned it right, couldn't have they stayed open at sort of more than fifty percent capacity? Like I feel like the cleaning aspect is a very big part of whether indoor dining should or should not have continued back then. Yeah, it it, it you know you know somebody in my business might say sure that that would be you know if if every if the place was sanitized after uh, you know every turn of a table that you'd have a, you'd be in good shape and risk free you're never risk free and i still think that the restaurant shouldn't have closed because people should be allowed to take risks but i think that um, the minute you know you sanitize and then somebody sneezes you have to sanitize all over again it's not like a permanent solution um, and if you notice um, these companies such as Stanley steamer and and smaller ones charge a, a small fortune to disinfect i don't think the price ever adjusted so that it became a viable way to kind of survive each day in a pandemic because it's, you know, let's say 2000 bucks to, to, uh, 
to, to sanitize a uh, you know a daycare center, for example. You don't want to do that every day, although you 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 want to do it every day, but you can't afford to. So um, you know it was never meant to be. I think um, unless some other solution gets. Uh, so how invented. does citrus? How <laughs> does how does citrus stand out? I mean, you're talking about how all these other companies. How does citrus appeal stand out for your clients? Yeah, I'll tell you in a couple of ways. One is um, we're not the cheapest, but we're also not the most expensive. And uh, we kind of trail Stanley Steamer a little bit less expensive than they are. But they're kind of rip-off artists. Um, you know, they, they nickel and dime you. You, you, you call um, for a certain service, and then before you know it, you've um, you spent triple or quadruple what you uh, intended to because, you know, you wanted deodorizer and didn't realize it's not included with the steam cleaning. And what we do is uh, we include things. We don't nickel and dime. If you call and you want you know, three rooms and a hallway clean, we're going to include in the price the disinfectant and even a small amount of stain spotting. So um, we don't nickel and dime, and I don't like to have uh, unhappy customers, and that's the reason I don't um, nickel and dime and trick and bait and switch. Um, so it's important to uh, treat your customers with respect, and I, I'm so willing to criticize certain names like that one because they really do, you know, behave in that manner. And um, I, I actually was aware of it before I got into the business, and I saw it as a sort of opening from a marketing standpoint to, um, you know, once you satisfy a client once and they, they pay the bill and they say, wow, the bill was what Doug said it would be on the phone when he booked the job with me. Um, you know, basically, that's it. Uh, Doug, I know that you've been on, okay. you, you're in the field a lot. So, favorite activity to do while on the job site? Like, I know. You know, Rudy liked the whole uh, buffing, uh, you know, buffing the whole area. What, what's your favorite activity that you like to do while on the job site? Uh, oh, that's interesting you ask. Um, I actually love, you know, um, I don't do many jobs uh, anymore. I, I do more of the booking of the jobs and then making sure the customer is happy and resolving issues when they arise. But if you have to ask me what I enjoy in terms of the cleaning process, um, it, it's, uh, you know, cleaning a really – filthy carpet with our rotovac which kind of is a circular motion machine apparatus instead of a typical carpet cleaning wand it kind of goes round and round and scrubs the carpets so when you're kind of moving across the carpet you see it getting clean and it has a hose that's see-through so you can see the dirty water coming right up into the into the hose and it's very satisfying uh, and you know cleaning stairs with a upholstery tool the stair tool is very satisfying there is something yeah satisfying about it so uh, all, all of that is, is, is great. Um, and also just, just looking at the finished product of every house that we clean. Um, you know, when I leave that home and we smell, <laughs> we smell the orange peel scent and the customer loves it and just fall, loves us. Uh, so we, that, that gives me the most pleasure, the, the customer's you know, reaction as well. Well, you definitely illustrate this too on your Instagram. I've seen on Tetris Appeal the whole before and after, and it's a pretty cool process. Oh yeah, it's um, you know we don't always achieve a hundred percent result, but we don't promise a hundred percent, you know, um, you know, solution uh, because we know that uh, certain stains simply won't come out, and we tell the client in advance. But you know, for example, if you want to get, um, if you want to get a uh, the smell of urine <laughs> out, or you know, a senior citizen had an accident in a senior center, very common. Um, it's personal dignity, and somebody has to come and clean that stuff up why, why shouldn't it be me <laughs> so we, we, we clean it up we charge we charge a nice amount to do it and um you know um customers like our fairness in terms of the pricing and the quality of the work we provide and uh you know i think it's just basically a win-win now i i i don't know if this was your passion so adapting to this kind of industry what was that like for you yeah um I, I did it the way that they don't recommend you you started out, which is I never worked for a previous you know I never previously worked for a, uh, a steam cleaning company. I, I learned from literally my chemical supplier. Um, he helped me to become a citrus branded company. Well, I started with the brand concept, and he helped me to fulfill that brand concept by actually providing me with natural citrus solutions. And he was the guy who helped me on a job-by-job -job basis while I was brand new, didn't know a thing about it, was doing the jobs myself. And, um, yeah, he guided me step-by-step. Step. And to this day, I'm still calling him with, uh, you know, more sophisticated questions, but I'm still 
asking him, for example, you know, in the beginning I'd ask him, um, you know, how, how do you, do you include uh, the mattress on a hide bed when you're doing the, the couch that has a pull-out bed? Um, is that typical in the industry? I had no idea. Or, you know, now, whereas now I'm, I'm, um, you know, asking questions about linen and uh, a wool silk blend and uh, what measures to take to uh, make sure that there's no uh, bleeding of the delicate uh, paints that, that are, you know, the, the dyes that, um, that color those Persian rugs and very expensive heirloom rugs. So it just depends on what, uh, what the question might be. But I basically, you know, do my best to always be curious and always uh, never be afraid to ask questions. Well, I, I don't know if you want to become an industry leader, but that's a term that's used a lot in like media and everything like that. But in the cleaning industry, is there sort of that leader? Is there sort of that gold standard that, that all cleaners want, want to reach? Uh, that's a very good question. I, I think the industry suffers from, um, from the idea that whoever is the biggest is the best, meaning, let's say, Stanley Steamer. I would never name other brand names uh, the way I do name their brand name because they're so large, you really can't do any harm to them. <laughs> you know, you can't uh, really uh, knock them off their perch. They they have television advertising; they're huge, but um, I, they definitely don't do the most thorough job. Um, and I I think that in order for a customer to find the best cleaner in their uh, city or municipality, wherever they're living, uh, it's it's going to be through experience. It's really on a you know city by city basis. Um, and is there an industry leader? No, I don't think there's no. I don't think there's a an industry leader off the top of my my mind. I'd love to become one because we're, you know, we're thinking about ex- expanding and franchising. So uh, who knows what the future holds? But that's that's far off. All right. Well, let's talk about that. Let let you have Citrus Appeal. Now let's say it's in another place. How excited is that going to be to have your brand? in another city, let alone in another state, let alone city. Yeah. Yeah. Our first expansion city is actually was going to be Washington DC, but now it's Miami. Um, I have my first employee is, um, moving to Miami and, um, he is going to uh, be basically the first franchisee of citrus appeal. Um, it's going to be more of a partnership, but he is uh, going to uh, partner with me in the, in the entire Florida market. So, um, we feel that's going to be a good match. And, uh, and we're excited about that little step for uh, for expansion. And then, you know, I'm still pursuing Washington D.C. So, you know, we'll have uh, a presence in all of Jersey as we do now, and then uh, D.C. and Miami, and then fill in that East Coast. And I think that would be a good career. I'd be happy with that if we didn't, even if we didn't make it quite nationally, if we uh, could just fill in that East Coast and have locations from, uh, you know, from Charleston to Atlanta to. Uh, to Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, New Jersey, New York, it would be great. Well, let's talk about New York because we're dealing with this whole real estate crisis, and who knows, cleaning may not be needed in these buildings, or I don't know. It's like, uh, should these buildings be cleaning? Should returning uh, businesses come back? Or I don't know. Does real estate and cleaning have anything to do with each other to bring people back into the city? I mean, sure. I mean, every every hotel has to have a, a good cleaning crew. Otherwise, your reputation is going to be soiled. You know, not to uh, not to uh, no pun intended, but you know your um, you know your reputation is uh, is is important, especially when you're dealing with a five star hotel or or a fancy law firm. You really want to make sure it's clean, and that's where you know steam cleaning companies come in and um, can capitalize on their reputation because uh, we help to actually protect the reputation of those offices we clean um the companies the firms the hotels um so it's it's very important um to to just to remain you know um to remain clean and to protect your investment you you know think of how much money they spend to lay down carpet tile or a fancier carpet in their hotels and they want to maintain them so we help them to do that well you know you just about reputation and cleaning i mean someone say well uh, it, it becomes when you talk to people in the industry that cleaning is actually a very dignified thing where on the outside looking in, that may not be the case. So I feel like you're changing the messaging about being part of the industry, if, if that if that makes sense. 
Oh yeah, I think uh, if I if I'm getting your your question um, clearly, it, there's a kind of um, there's a kind of uh, industry uh, people shy away from the industry because it's it's not dignified enough for them, right? And, and I think that there's some truth to that. People probably do say, I don't want to get into that cleaning business. I don't want to clean for people. I don't want to be a maid. I don't want to be a housekeeper. Uh, you know, um, I, I never liked you know uh, people who I don't, I don't dislike the people, but I never liked that message or that fear of, uh, of hard work, you know, that of, um, of, of a business that lacks, uh, what is the word, um, a business that lacks, uh, you know, a, a basic dignity, I guess. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it has dignity, I think. It's, it's all, you know, Stanley Steamer, CEO, would, would tell you well, they were a regular real business just the way any business is a real business. And uh, I view this business that way. Uh, in terms of dollars coming in and profit margin, it's a far superior business to say, for example, the restaurant business, which you know you'd be lucky to earn five cents on every dollar that you bring in. So and that was the way pre-pandemic too. The restaurant business has always been a tough industry, but unfortunately, pandemic made it way harder. But I get your point on the profit margins there. Yeah, the profit margins uh, can be really good on a, on, a, on steam cleaning business, uh, provided you are smart about. You know um, how much product you're you're using uh, while making it a, a nice impact on what, what you're cleaning, you know that kind of thing. So it's it's uh, it's it's a better business, I think, in terms of uh, what you're left with. Well, Doug, you've had clients during this pandemic, but I gotta ask you, did you ever notice people slacking off, not wanting to get their place cleaned because well we're in lockdown, no one's gonna come over. Like, did you ever notice that too, that oh, there was a slack course. off? In fact. Well, there was, it was, there was a point uh, many months where uh, people were kind of hoarded up in, in their homes without any guests, um, and we did have the odd cleaning job, but not many. And we were busy doing the daycare centers, um, the learning experience. We were cleaning those basically to the exclusion of any homes for months and months. And did that frustrate you? Like, I'm sure you were like, come on, people, clean your homes. Who cares if it's a lockdown or not? Well, as a business owner, you're always aware, even though there's a perfect explanation, a perfectly valid explanation as to why people aren't calling, you never like for the phones to stop ringing. It's an alarming thing. And I think that's what makes business so interesting is when times are good uh, and you're making, you know, let's just give you an example, you know, like let's say I have, uh, two locations now, one for North Jersey and one for, you know, central South Jersey. Um, you know, I can get a job in for a home in Rumson, 800 bucks, another home in Fairhaven, another 800 bucks, and a home in, in Ridgewood, you know, 500 bucks. When it rains, it pours, and you're like, you've had a great, a good day, you know, a nice profitable day. Uh, whereas the phone could also, conversely, not ring at all for months on end, which, which happened, which happened to us. And it's up to me as a business owner to, fix that and survive through it, you know, and we, and we did that. 100%. And I was just thinking, you know, people had the stimulus money. They're now wanting to spend it. So why not spend it on cleaning? Right. Oh, and, and they do. And they do. Um, I, I don't think there's a, a been a, a permanent shift to cleaning more um, than they did pre pandemic. Uh, but I do think that there is a temporary, uh, improvement in the in the cleaning habits because they're staying home to work one extra day per week so it's let's say a four work a four day work weekend in the office now uh, just say typically uh, ver versus one day at home in your home office now if, the more time you spend in your home the more likely you are to want to clean it so so to the extent that people aren't going back full 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 time to the office yeah it's it's um we, we do notice the improvement, put it that way. Um, when people go back five days a week, will, will it go back to the way it was? That's maybe. Um, but it's okay if they do that. We're growing our customer base, and we're, we're happy. We did well pre-pandemic, and we're going to hopefully do well when the pandemic is completely over and everybody's back to work. So do you, as a, you know, because you just follow the news, you're, you follow politics, you follow the trends of life. So aside from the cleaning, do you really see people coming back Full time? I don't know. I feel like people are going to want to stay home some of the time now. I could be wrong, but I, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think I think there's going to be a shift 
to a little bit more home time, a little bit more, um, which means four days at work, one day at home, I think is going to become the norm. And I hope it does. I used to be against that becoming the norm. I used to be a proponent of five days a week, full days, and I'm no longer a proponent of that because, A, I don't believe employees will use their time wisely, and uh, when they're at the office five days a week, full days, you know, I we work at a radio station before together, and, you know, there was always downtime when you just couldn't possibly do any more work because you'd finished all the work that was uh, right. given to you, I guess. And, right. Um, so I think that um, there is going to be a, probably a shift to four days a week and one day at home as the norm. I hope that happens because it will allow moms and dads to have a little more time with their children. Even that extra day sure. is huge. And I think that Americans don't spend enough time with their kids. That's a whole other issue. But that's um, And you're a Canadian saying true. that, by the way. You're a Canadian saying that. <laughs> yep, that's so, true. I'm a, I'm an American and a Canadian. I, I have dual citizenship. Um, Canadians, so... I think, get more time with their kids. I think the culture, the work culture, is almost what the American is, but it's not quite. In the words, um, you know, the expectations are to produce what it is you uh, you as an employee set out to produce, but maybe not with quite as much micromanagement. I find that there's cultural a bit of difference between. The two countries. Uh, there, there really is. We're going to get to con- the Canadians in a second because I know that's your second passion beyond uh, this company is, you know, hockey is the Canadians. But you touched on something a little earlier about the natural organic citrus and, and talk about that a little more. Oh, sure. Um, you know, a lot of these uh, bottles of chemicals that, you know, let's just say the Stanley Steamers of the world will produce and use in your home. Uh, if you look at the label, it'll, it'll have a warning label on the, from the state of California. It says the ingredients in this solution are known to cause cancer in whatever lab rats or, you know, that kind of thing. There's none of that in our uh, natural citrus uh, pre-spray, which is what we use. We use the same pre-spray on our couches, on our carpets, on our area rugs, um, with a few exceptions. If we have, you know, heirloom rugs, really fancy $80,000, $100,000 rugs, we, hey, we even cleaned a uh, we even cleaned a four hundred thousand dollar rug. Yes, we did. <laughs> but I won't use the regular citrus pre spray on those because of the pH. So um, the, the long and short of it is, the moms love our product because of what it doesn't have in it, and and the, the smell is all natural. They can tell. I think women are really intuitive, smart, and once I give them that message, um, the actual cleaning process sort of confirms it to them, and that's why we get such good repeat. Business. It's not that nasty Febreze type of chemical smell. Although everything is a chemical, as you know, water, the air you breathe, it's all chemicals. Everything, nothing's chemical free. So the 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 products we use are just safer. You know, I believe they are safer. We don't use any kind of uh, respirators unless we're doing um, fogging for COVID. And uh, yeah, so it's basically uh, it's basically a citrus orange solution with. Uh, the choice of natural lemon peel or orange peel deodorizer afterwards. I was just going to say, you know, it, it sounds to me that with the coloring of these rugs, it's not just cleaning it. You've got to be very meticulous with all of this. Yeah, there's color fastness issues. So imagine if you take somebody's rug and you um, and you smudge the red onto the brown or something like that from their Iranian rug. Some people spend their entire lives making, creating one rug, literally. Cre- they spend their lives creating one heirloom rug and then they call it a career. That's why they go for so much money and they're beautiful rugs. Um, I've recently become a certified dye, carpet dyeing specialist, so if I, if I ever do run into that problem, I can, um, I can apply some dyes and hopefully um, fix, fix the problem that I created before any insurance claim is filed, which uh, I hope to avoid. And, and that brings up another thing, you know, uh, some of the best jobs we ever got were jobs where uh, we declined to do them, you know, politely declined, said, sorry, sir, you've told me, you know, or ma'am, <laughs> you've told me a couple of times that this rug is $200,000. Um, I see based on, you know, based on what I can observe, 
the color fastness might be an issue based on the stain you have on this rug, and I don't want to risk it. I'm so sorry. And I'll, and I'll walk away from it. Those are great jobs to walk away from. You know, I have no reservations. And sometimes because, you're saying you just leave it as is because you don't want to make it worse, in other words. Exactly. That's very true, yeah. We don't want to make it worse, so um, we'll, we'll tell them, for example, when mold, when mold gets on a, an area rug, um, the, real, the real suggestion to the client should always be, it's lights out for this rug, you know? I can apply certain solutions, but um, there's, you know, you, you've had it wrapped up in, in, in plastic for two years, and, it, and, there's, and there's green growth coming out of the entire rug. This is a garbage rug, you know. I mean, I could, and, and they've insisted sometimes we, we've had, um, you know, uh, we've had them state that we won't be responsible for any any damage, which is the only condition under which I'll I'll clean the rug because it was in such bad shape. And then we'll bring it back to uh, like it was a new condition, but we only do it if if there's an ironclad disclosure, you know? Can I flip it around? Uh, What's it like to be trusted with those kind of projects too? Like they're calling on you to fix this rug. That means something, doesn't it? Yeah. I think what, uh, what usually happens is, um, you know, when you're called into a 10,000 square foot home in Rumson or Fairhaven and you, uh, you do uh, five or six rooms and a couch, it's usually the second or third call where they'll say, hey, I have a silk rug and uh, I need it clean because of this issue or that issue or just regular maintenance. And then that's when you usually get the, um, the call. We, we charge, like every other you know, rug cleaner, we charge quite a bit for uh, off-site rug cleaning. We come and roll the rug up. We take it to our facility, you know, 5,000 square foot facility, where we uh, submerge it in a solution and you know, squeegee the rug and you know clean it and then put it in a you know spin cycle uh in a, in a kind of built to suit dryer and then hang it up for about a week so it's a real it's a real uh process and you know we charge four bucks a square foot so if you can imagine you know a 20 by 20 rug which is not uncommon um you know you're charging upwards of a thousand dollars to clean a rug you know it's... doug last time i hung out with you at yankee stadium you were just sort of getting this off the ground, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe it was a year in, and now here you are expanding beyond that. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it's, it's always risky, but um, life is not about not taking risks. You got to take the risk and, you know, see what happens and, um, and hopefully the best, uh, best outcome. If I were to ask you craziest place, craziest thing you ever had to clean up, craziest mess, if you will, do you have a story for us? Yes, I have, I have many stories. One was a crazy cat lady. Uh, she had very wealthy lady, very nice basement, uh, finished basement, but that's where she kept her cats because the husband didn't want the cats upstairs. The problem is it was the most nauseous. I don't know if you've ever smelt the cat spray or cat urine smell or cat feces smell that's left unattended, but it's, it's, it's one of the smells that I find more offensive than, you know, <laughs> than – uh, than you know, human waste or or anything like that. It's it's absolutely vile. And actually, I sent my employee now to do cat cleanup jobs. But it was you know what can I say? It was absolutely vile. I told the customer that um, there was no way we were going to get that smell all out, but that we could clean the rug portion of it. But you know, you, it's like smoking when when you smoke for ten years in a house. Um, you need to repaint and you need to oil prime that wall and the, and the trim and replace the fridge because with the minute you open that fridge, you're going to get that cigarette smell. It's, it's absolutely everywhere. Same thing with, you know, with a cat spray. It's, it, it's uh, nauseating to me. I can't stand it. It's gotten worse. I actually have very little tolerance for that smell. And I don't know. Yeah. Do you ever have to do rescues? Like, have you ever had to do a rescue of a, of a space of even maybe not a family, but you know, just – a rescue that that maybe you don't oh, see every day. No, but, but not a rescue. But um, there has been several sad stories where, for example, COVID in the beginning of coronavirus, it killed um, uh, a 52 year old man, and the, his roommate mother, his his mother who was he was living with, got a COVID a case of COVID. She survived it after being on a ventilator, and we were uh, we had to go into the house to um, to basically sanitize it. And uh, and also for emotional reasons to kind of clear out 
just stuff that might have belonged to the son that was lying around and just kind of put it in its proper place in his room. So we, you know, basically spent the day washing everything, everything that belonged to anybody we washed. And, you know, cleaned out the fridge, uh, threw out all the food. Literally, she wanted no memory of the food that was there. Threw it all away. Um, sprayed our anti-COVID time oil disinfectant everywhere. Literally fogged the place. And then, um, you know, had a maid service come and clean, uh, wipe down the entire place and then clean the carpet. So it was a, a very heavy-duty type of uh, cleaning. But rescue, no. It just um, kind of felt good to do that kind of a cleaning, though. Um to help uh, help the bereaved mother return to the home. Okay, so let's so there is a spirituality to the cleaning uh, as well as is basically what I'm hearing. Yeah, I mean, if you if you consider that, you know, um, that you're helping somebody to um, make something a little more bearable, and you know, like returning home after COVID, and your son has died um, in the home. Um, you know, um, that's sure it's kind of scary. I hope you've also had some other upbeat spiritual things like thank God you came in and cleaned this for us type of moments as well. Oh yeah, for sure. You you know, we've had I'll give you an example, you know, senior a senior prom mishap where a girl uh, you know, vomit I hate to use all these words, but there's no substitute. What am I gonna say? She got sick from drinking too much alcohol with her friends and uh, her strict parents were gonna come home and see that the fancy carpets were ruined. Well, you know, we, we make it like it never happened, you know, so that's a that's kind of a, a deep satisfaction that we get. And, um, you know, w- when we walk away and everything is just sparkling like new and the, and, and the only thing the parents think is that they've the kids did a favor for them, you know, w- before they return. That's, that's <laughs> a, it's, a, it's a great feeling. Doug cannot bail you out from your strict parents. So let's make that clear. <laughs> Maybe you can. Right. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know. I know that um, your life is outside of cleaning as well, so let's talk for a minute because we both love sports, and your Canadians have moved on for the first time since 1993. The irony is the Islanders' last home series in the National Coliseum was also 93, and so, I mean, they're not going to advance, but your Canadians are, and, and I don't know, do you feel that momentum, that magic? I mean, they weren't even, they, they, they weren't even predicted to come this far, were they? No, they were, they were not. In fact, one of the uh, Vegas uh, players was known to have said that it will be like uh, the series will be like playing an AHL team. Well, he couldn't have been more wrong. And, uh, you know, Carey Price is, I would say, Carey Price and Cole Caulfield are the main reasons for that. Um, but also you got a, a pretty deep team is what you're re- finding out. Nick Suzuki and, uh, you know, uh, just Barry. It, all of these players are truly showing that they are, going to be major major stars well and you know nick suzuki had such a great pass i mean you can't get any better than that pass right i mean what a what a game winner it does it doesn't get any better than that i mean all three forwards charging up to the net passing to each other for the goal you know it's amazing it was really an amazing sight to see all right yeah it's been since uh 1993 Yes, it's 93, and as you say, you know, Carey Price kind of does his own thing in Canada. He's highlighted a little bit, but for the most part, the American media really only covers him when he's down here. He wasn't here at all this year because of the way the league was. Did you like the league realignment, or do you wish they played here? Like, what would you think of all that? Um, I thought that the NHL went too far, and it's still going too far in Canada, keeping fans out. I mean, I know there's 3,500 fans allowed into the uh, – Montreal arena, but you know, I think that it's a, a mistake to just allow that. It should be full capacity, and uh, people should be enjoying enjoying hockey. It's um, you know, it's left wing politics. I hate to be honest about it or get political, but um, it's you're not it's wrong. Left wing politics. You're yeah. not wrong, and yeah. I know that 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 kind of that that's something that you fight against every day on your Facebook, and actually, I'm sure <laughs> not in your business, so to speak, but certainly. As a business owner, you're always watching out to see what policies are coming out. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, thankfully, actually, the cleaning business is one of the one of those rare businesses where it's not too inundated with rules and um, 
bylaws. Um, it's one that's been kind of overlooked for these crazy uh, r rules that'll keep you, you know, wondering and guessing if you're doing things properly. So I'm grateful for that for sure. It can drive you nuts if you're a business owner. I mean, especially the last year and what three, four months already. Uh, Doug, I've loved this conversation, but I've got to ask you this. I mean, as a kid growing up, you, you saw the Zamboni doing the cleaning on the ice. I mean, there's the, I don't know. To tie it to cleaning, there's nothing like that. Have you ever driven a Zamboni? <laughs> That's funny. A great question. No, never drove a Zamboni, but it's the same process. If you think about it, they're applying hot water to clean the uh, scraped up ice and make it smooth. And uh, we, we, use, we use heat and chemicals. And uh, an agitation. So we use all those three things. We're kind of like a Zamboni going end to end on the carpeted room instead of the ice. So there's a great comparison there. Yeah. I always yeah. tie it into the, the main topic of the day, you know. So Doug Hart. Exactly. Uh, where You know, I've, I went this whole time. Where can people find you? How can they get in touch with you? Oh, uh, yeah. To, to hire us, uh, it provided you're in the New Jersey state of New Jersey. Anywhere, we'll go all the way from Mawa all the way down to Margate City, you name it, uh, and anywhere in between. Uh, they can log on to uh, citrusappeal.com. That's C-I-T-R-U-S-A-P-E-E-L.com. Um, or they can give us a ring. Our phone number is on the website. And they can book something uh, for their home. And I got to just throw this out there because I'm sure there are still some wondering. COVID protocols, you guys still have that? Do you mask up? Do you always... How, it, are uh, you guys still enforcing the COVID protocol in the company? Uh, we mask up at, at a client's request. We offer them a, an opportunity to have us mask up if they like. Um, but that just goes for, you know, in line with uh, with what uh, what the CDC was recommending. Before they removed the mask mandates, we were always masked up. We had uh, latex gloves on. We had, uh, you know, we had Tyvek suits at times and uh, even respirators at times just depended on what the situation we were walking into. Doug, I got to say, Doug, I got to say, I'm very proud of you and the strides you're making. It's so cool to see this company grow and, and uh, thanks for joining the podcast. Talk about it. Oh, thanks a lot, Alex. Anytime. We're Great. always adapting. Talk to you soon.